Hey guys, my name is Shreyas and welcome to Simple Biology. In this video, we're going to be looking at genetic variation, genetic variation preservation, as well as the limits that natural selection has. Now, why will would nature have to preserve genetic variation in the first place? Let me give you a good example of why, so you can understand. So let's say there is a bug population, and that bug population consists of three types of bugs. Red bugs, orange bugs, and yellow bugs. And let's say the spider comes around, and it likes to feed on the red and the orange ones because it, I don't know, just likes that color. So what's going to happen is, this is an example of natural selection, so the red and orange ones are not going to reproduce as much as the yellow ones, and then eventually the population will consist of mostly just yellow bugs. Which is great, okay? Then, let's say, the that spider um, population gets wiped out. And then let's say this frog population comes about in the same environment, and those frogs like to eat, feast on the yellow bugs. So what's going to happen now is th that frog is going to eat the yellow bugs which have been left off, and now there are no more bugs left. So that's not good for a population because you know if an environment changes then natural selection what it's doing is it's actually doing a bad thing it's taking genetic variation and not making a population as diverse in order for a population to be healthy when scientists talk about population there needs to be variation all the time and natural selection has a tendency to ruin variation so because of that there nature has a few ways of keeping genetic variation in a population even while natural selection is present. And the first type is diploidy. Okay, so what is diploidy? Most eukaryote, eukaryotes are diploid. So let's back up. What's a eukaryote? A eukaryote is a organism which has cells, and those cells are membrane have membrane-bound organelles, typically complex and they have a nucleus, okay? Those are three big things that characterize eukaryotes. And they're diploid. So what does dip, diploid mean? Because they are diploid, they have two sets of their um, genetic material. We talked about what a gene was, so, and we said how DNA and genes are kind of like the blueprint for an organism. So eukaryotes have two copies of that blueprint. So what does that do? Because there's two copies, that's why they're called diploid, that die means two, there's two copies of each gene. Now, the reason why that's important is sometimes harmful, harmful recessive alleles, let's say there's two genes for something, sometimes the, these recessive alleles can be hidden by dominant ones. Now if you're you all have a background in genetics, you will probably understand this, but if you don't, a recessive allele, there's usually two types of alleles, recessive alleles and dominant alleles. And the thing is, dominant alleles will always take the place of recessive alleles, and they will display that phenotype. And so because of diploidy, even if a recessive allele is present, there's going to be one more allele, because again, each uh, uh, eukaryote carries two copies of each gene, and that dominant one can high, can take over the recessive allele and the organism will be safe. Um, for example, genetic diseases, if you see some, most genetic diseases are found on recessive alleles, so even if the organism has a recessive allele for that genetic disease, it can have a dominant one which is healthy and uh, that's going to prevent the organism from having that genetic disease. Okay, now why is diploidy, how does that prevent natural selection from occurring? So natural selection can keep, keep occurring, but because these organisms kind of have two sets, two different alleles, it's, it's going to be good because uh, the organisms are carrying two different sets of chromosomes and two different sets of blueprints, so that way if natural selection wipes out one, uh, another allele can present itself and therefore um, genetic variation is maintained. Balancing selection. So natural selection can maintain multiple forms of a species. Okay, And you can see this in two ways. The first type is the heterozygote advantage, um, heterozygote advantage and the second is 
frequency dependent uh, selection. So the heterozygote um, zygote advantage is when it's better for an organism. So let's let's back up here. We talked about how eukaryotes are diploids. So there's three basic things. Homozygous individuals have two dominant alleles or two recessive alleles. Heterozygotes have a dominant allele and a recessive allele. Okay, so sometimes when natural selection selects for the heterozygote advantage, the, the, the one that's the heterozygotes, when it selects for that, it's good for a population because the heterozygote has both the dominant allele and the recessive allele, so the genetic variation is kept because there's two different types of alleles when compared to the other homozygous individuals which only have two dominant or two recessive alleles. Okay, so that's the first type the heterozygote advantage. The second type is frequency dependent selection selects for the least common phenotype. So frequency dependent selection always keeps um, genetic variation too. So that means frequency dependent selection is when too much of a phenotype presents itself. What will happen is that it, it, natural selection will bring it back down. Let me give you an example. So let's say there, there's an, I was reading about this, there's this type of fish which actually has two variations. There can either be right mouth or left mouth. So what that means is that one, the right mouth fish can only attack predators, um, their, their prey from the right, and the left mouth fish can only attack their prey from the left. So what's going to happen is that if there's too many right mouth fish, what will happen is the prey will learn that, okay, this, these fish are always going to attack from the right, and they'll learn how to move away from that. And the right mouth fish will not be able to attack anymore. Same thing with the left mouth fish. If there's too many left mouth fish in the population, the prey will eventually realize that, hey, I need to um, avoid it um, because it's, since it's a left mouth fish, it can only attack from the left. So it kind of balances itself, um, natural selection balances itself out. So whenever there's too many right mouth fish, they will die out because the prey will learn. Whenever there's too many left mouth fish, the prey will die out. And it keeps it balanced. So that's frequency dependent selection. And that also maintains genetic variation. There's also a last thing that maintains genetic variation that's called neutral variation. So many genes are, aren't essential, entirely essential to survival or can be a slight, altered slightly without negative effect. effect. And often these slightly different versions of proteins can be found only a handful of amino acids change. So sometimes you can get a, a gene, new gene which doesn't really do anything and a natural selection won't select for it, but then later if the environment changes then that gene can actually become useful. So that's what neutral variation is. Alright, so just to recap, diploidy basically means that since there's two copies of the allele one allele can present itself if the other allele, if natural selection selects for the other allele. Balancing selection, heterozygote advantage means that there's the dominant and the recessive, so there's two, there's two different alleles. Frequency dependent selection means that natural selection won't allow too much of one recessive, um, one allele to show up. And neutral variation is when there's genes but then they don't have a negative effect. Okay, now let's talk about natural selection's flaws. First, it can't create new alleles and variations. So we talked about this problem with the bugs, right? How natural selection just cuts out individuals and never creates new ones. So that's a big problem sometimes, and it can hurt a population. And sometimes this genetic variation preservation can't save a population and it just gets wiped out because natural selection just, you know, just took out everything. It ruined the variation and, uh, and eventually something happened, the population gets wiped out. Another flaw, structures can be modified but not built from scratch. So meaning that, so you can, natural selection can kind of slightly change the structure with time, but it can't create this completely new structure, which can sometimes be a disadvantage. And another flaw is selection can be represented as a compromise between two ideal traits. Okay, so that's kind of going with the modified thing. It's it's only a compromise between two different traits. You never see like new traits forming. It's it's just a compromise. The last flaw is that organisms are affected by more than just their genes. Okay, and that's it. Genetic variation and natural selection's limits are as simple as that.